Find anything? Not in this fog. Sir, driftwood could easily be mistaken for a sea monster. Perhaps that is what the captain saw. But this driftwood apparently circled the ferry on three separate days. Keep looking. Unless it comes right up to the boat and knocks, I don't think... Would someone care to answer that? Ice? But it's not even winter. Over there. Iceberg! <laughs> Certain, son? Kind of look like a person. No. Excellent aim, sir. Though I am puzzled as to what was gained by throwing away your comm unit. If someone is stranded on that hunk of glacier, Danny and Blades can track the signal right to them. Speaking of close, how about we fly at a higher altitude? Higher? Alert the media. Well, it's a known fact that sea monsters like to pull low-flying helicopters right out of the air. Did you just make that up? It could happen. Iceberg, dead ahead. Here's Dad's comm link. Well, if anyone was here, they're gone now. What's that? Hmm. Blades, the de-icing foam. Question? If no one is here, why are we? Uh, where's your spirit of adventure, Blades? I keep it back at the firehouse. It's some sort of control panel. Cody didn't really just push that. Ah! Oh. Blades, are you okay? Say something! No more pushing random buttons. Sorry. What kind of iceberg is this? It's not an iceberg. It's a ship covered in ice. Let's look around. Excuse me, but exploring ghost ships requires the whole rescue team. And the Navy. And I'd give Optimus a call too. Huh, here's the ship's log. It says we're on the SS Isolde. Cody. Call this into Dad. I'll search for any passengers. The Isolde? And it doesn't look like anyone's been inside here for years. Probably because that freighter was lost in 1966. You know something about it, Dad? The Isolde was used to transport experimental tech to Griffin Rock. 
So what happened? The captain and crew had to abandon ship after certain cargo became unstable. It says here the captain was Zachary Burns. <gasps> Great Grandpa? Yep. He never talked about it. But whatever happened on board really spooked him. So finish the search and hightail it off of there. Is this your great-grandfather, Cody? I'm not sure. I've never seen a picture of him. But if it is, I bet my dad would love to have this. He and his grandpa were really close. <laughs> hey, guys. Didn't find anyone on board, but... Wanna bet that's what's causing the deep freeze? Because someone left the power switch on? You'll be all right. Uh, no more pushing random toggle switches either. Can you fly? Try and stop me. Cody, let's move it. According to Doc Green, lab records from 1966 show most of the Isolde's cargo was top secret. Except for this. The Sub-Zero Expander. Ah, ah. Divert your eyes, Blades. Think warm thoughts. It says here it was intended to restore melting polar caps by generating fresh ice. <laughs> Too bad their Sub-Zero doohickey was a foul ball. Thing's obviously a hazard. We can't just leave something like that drifting around where people might run into it again. I, I say, say we, we blow, blow it up. up. Huh? Figures it would take explosives to make you two agree. But we can't destroy Great Grandpa's ship. And not recovering that old tech would be a missed opportunity. As much as saving the Isolde would mean to me, I'm with the bomb squad on this one. We leave in five. We're going back out there? Some of us. Sorry, son. You've had enough thrills and chills for one day. Rescue bots, roll to the rescue! Captain's Log, May 25th, 1966. Rough seas. First mate reports a crate is broken open. As a result, the device inside has activated, awaiting instructions from the Griffin Rock Lab. Power up and energize! minutes, team. Then boom goes the dynamite. <gasps> Wait! Something's moving in the water! And I think it's alive! See? Monster... Whatever it is, it's gonna get caught in the blast. We have barely two minutes. Blades. It might be prudent to move everyone behind us, sir. Wait! That's no shark! J 
Chief Burns, you and your ham-fisted robots are trespassing. Dr. Morocco! That's two mysteries solved. The sea monster and the iceberg man. You have a lot of nerve showing up here, Morocco. There's still a warrant out for your arrest. Pish posh. The mayor and I patched things up as soon as I returned his missing schooner. What did you mean by we're trespassing? Finders, keepers. <laughs> like that'll hold up at court. Unfortunately, it will. Naval salvage laws say that whoever finds an abandoned ship gets to claim it and its cargo. Signed by your mayor this very morning. The SS is sold a, and everything on board belongs to yours truly. I'm calling the mayor now, Dad. Dr. Morocco, some of that cargo is really unstable. Seriously, do you not see the ice? Such concern does warm the heart. That said, I demand that you cease interfering with my salvage operation. Dad, the mayor confirmed it. The Isolde belongs to Dr. Morocco. All right, team. We've done all we can here. Unbelievable. Log entry. We've received instructions from the Griffin Rock Lab to abandon ship. Dad, listen to Captain Burns' final log entry. Any attempt to move the damaged Sub Zero expander will likely cause it to explode <gasps> and flash freeze everything within five miles. That's why Great Grandpa never went back for it. Morocco putting only himself in danger is one thing. Cody, check for any other craft in the area. <laughs> Change course. Attention all passengers. passengers. Please, Please take, take shelter, shelter in your cars immediately. immediately. And welcome to Griffin Rock. I've grown weary of this debate. Your grandfather's ship is now mine. The expander is going ballistic. Firebot, assist Dr. Morocco into his submarine. As commanded. <laughs> I'll have you up on charges, do you hear? That man is not humankind's greatest example. I don't think we're gonna make it out of range in time. Vehicle modes, now! Chase, I am fine, sir, except for the p -p parts which are immobile. Kate, Danny, Graham, do you read? Come on, he wave, open up! Can't. Frozen. Solid. 
I, I think I can move us. No, don't. We moved. Try opening your canopy. Still stuck. Wait. No. Still stuck. Dad, are you all right? Anybody? Cody, you are a sight for cold optics. Just give it a second to work, Chase. Me next. Kate's overstayed his welcome. Nice work, Cody. Oh, you're a lifesaver. I'd have busted out of there sooner or later. Did the town get hit? It's only icy up to the shoreline. Looks like you got the worst of it right here. Danny? Check the Sub-Zero Expander while we help Dr. Morocco. That machine has frozen its last bot. When I'm warmer, I'll jump for joy. Now look who abandoned ship. Well, that means he's all right. So what now? Drive home or wait for the ice to melt? Hmm, doesn't look very thick. Probably already melting, at least at the outer edges. Melting? But I saw four cars from the ferry driving across the ice back to town. Can you get there in time? We're on it. Rescue bots, roll to the rescue. from the ice field. Everyone, get to the boat. safe now. Drive carefully, avoid ice. Was that? Yes. 
Dr. Morocco actually came to our rescue. I'm sure he thinks that makes up for everything else he's done. Still, I never would have guessed that man had a grateful bone in his body. A grateful bone? Where exactly on a human is that located? Probably next to the funny bone we've heard about. The fairy's back, but no sign of the Isolde. Do you think Morocco took her? Well, chances are. Let's just hope any tech he got away with is too old to be useful. What is it, son? The portrait that was hanging in the Isolde's cargo hold. Grandpa Zachary. I haven't looked into that face for a long, long time. Hmm. Maybe there's hope for Dr. Morocco yet. Oh my. Just what the doctor ordered. Another warm day in the dead of winter. Mm. Really thins my fluids. Hello, bird of the air. Getting some sun too, I see. Ah! Someone's unleashed a weather machine! Snow! After a week of clear skies! Cody, see if Doc Green's been tinkering again. And I'll alert the chief in case Dr. Morocco has returned. No, with... no, wait. <laughs> That's not from a weather machine. Mr. Hooten's just decorating for the holiday. This isn't Christmas. But next week is midwinter morning. How many holidays do you humans have? This one's special. It's just for Griffin Rock. It all started back when. Rescue bots. A stack of logs just rolled onto a car. Someone's trapped inside. Stop! We have to remove the logs in the right order, or they could shift too much weight onto the car. Just remain calm, Mrs. Niederlander. And uh, you too, Mr. Pettipaws. Danny, any way to speed this up? Not safely. Oh, I'm about to toss my waffles as it is. Toss your... Oh, your breakfast. <sighs> Want to tell me why there's a stack of logs downtown? Bonfire for midwinter morning. I don't know why we bother. Hardly anyone shows up for it anymore. Doesn't a bonfire leave a big mess? Yep. Guess who cleans that up? <sighs> you are safe now. I drive you reckless robots. You tore the door off. No, hold on. Man, we there. took great care of A little thank you. Please you... don't be upset. Uh, let me handle this. Mrs. Niederlander, now our objective was to free you from the vehicle. 
Sometimes when we do that... This wouldn't have happened if that log pile wasn't such a hazard. Why even have a bonfire if nobody comes? We come. All right. How about if I give you and Mr. Pettipaws a lift home? Fine. Take me to my cabin. The one on the mountain? That's where I stay every year during this holiday charade. Well, after you. The last time I transported Mr. Pettipaws, he left me an odorous little parting gift. I remember. Had to drive with your windows down for a week. Young man, use that noisy tractor of yours to tow my car. I'm noisy? Ah, uh, yes, ma'am. Maybe that old grump should call someone else next time. And she can get her own cat out of the tree, too. A shame she has to be so ungrateful. Wonder why she doesn't like this holiday. Yeah, what could she have against getting presents? By the way, what'd you guys get me? Like I tell you. And like I'd remember. I clicked, I bought, it'll be here on the ferry. Were we supposed to buy presents? That's the way it works. I need a few things, so I'll give you a list. Presents cost money, right? Where do we get money? <sighs> Someone want to explain what this midwinter fuss is all about? Twas a winter storm like no other. The great nor'easter of 1713. Snow and ice had buried Griffin Rock, trapping the island's residents in their homes. Supply ships couldn't make the voyage, and when food ran out, people had no way of getting more. And then, one snowy night, a mysterious visitor slipped unnoticed into every home and left bread in the empty pantries. No one ever discovered who this benefactor was. So thereafter, he became known as the Rider of Midwinter. Clearly, this rider kept his identity a secret for fear of being arrested as a trespasser. So people give presents now as a way of honoring the mysterious rider who saved the town? Right. And the cool part is, everyone still finds bread on their doorstep every midwinter morning. A 300-year-old rider? I'm sorry, but I would not eat that bread. <laughs> no, Blades. It's someone else carrying on the tradition. But nobody knows who. So what's a bonfire have to do with any of this? After the blizzard, everyone gathered in town and lit a fire to keep warm. It just grew from that. Ugh. Hate to break it to you, Chase, but that air freshener? So not cutting it. Curse you, Mr. Pettipaws. Everyone, Everyone to the, the garage, garage please. please. Winter storm. As if this holiday doesn't keep us busy enough. Well, at least the town won't need to decorate with fake snow. Isn't this just wonderful? Snow on the road seriously complicates the rescues. Oh, I think it's beautiful. Me too. I hope it snows all week. It's been snowing all week. Conditions are so bad that nobody has even been out gift shopping. And for those of us who ordered online, the ferry carrying our packages has not arrived. Which means neither has the gourmet hot chocolate maker I bought for myself. I want my cocoa. vehicle sure can be frustrating. I too feel revved up with nowhere to go. Don't worry, Blades and Heatwave will get it done.
Over there! Kate, Heatwave, follow our searchlight. Roger that. I got you, buddy! He made it! But that shipping container didn't. What? No! Everything all right? Mario's safe, Dad. But the container of packages was lost. Ah, understood. Hopefully the rest of the town takes the news better than that. This is catastrophic! No presents on midwinter morning? Oh, the humanity! My gifts were on that ferry! Somebody bought gifts locally. Sorry, Danny. We ordered them online like most people. Maybe we could still go buy some gifts downtown. Except that stores have been closed since the snow started. No one should be out in this weather anyway. It is nearly impossible to drive responsibly in these conditions. Try flying. I have no feeling in my tail rotor. Uh, face it. This holiday's an even bigger bust than usual. Are you upset because your gifts were lost at sea, Cody? A little. I ordered some pretty neat presents for my family, and for you guys, too. But mostly, I'm sad we won't be getting the bread tomorrow. Whoever the rider of Midwinter is, he won't be able to make deliveries in this snow. Why not just consume the bread from your own kitchen? It's not really about the bread. But you just said... It's about the tradition. Being with family, finding bread on your doorstep, it all just gives you a warm feeling inside. Right. Because the bread is hot. Um, no. He means, like, internal combustion. Maybe I'm not being clear. I get it. The bread reminds everyone why they celebrate in the first place. Surviving the storm and being grateful for it. Exactly. Except nobody in town probably even cares anymore. They just want presents. Griffin Rock Emergency. Uh, Mrs. Niederlander. Aww. You need us all up at your cabin? Aww. Niederlander! What exactly is the emergency? Hello? Mrs. Niederlander? Hello? I lost the connection. Ah, we better get up there. You can't be serious. Hello, she's on the mountain. Can we wait until spring? I just hope Mr. Pettipaws does well, not need give her another reason to complain about us. she just showed a little appreciation. But what if she really does need us? Cody's right. This is the job we all signed on for. <sighs> Agreed. How do we get up there? The mountain roads are iced over. And the upslope winds are too severe for flying. Boulder might be able to make it. She said she needed all of us. I have an idea. Good thinking, Cody. The MHQ is heavy enough, I shouldn't be a problem. Dad, phones are still out. I hope Mrs. Niederlander is all right. Just don't be disappointed with her when this turns out to be nothing. I don't think she'd bring us all up there unless it was important. One would hope. Everyone okay? Uh, yeah. okay. Affirmative. Uh, yeah. Yes. Relative to what? Though I do suggest we proceed on foot from here. Agreed. Yeah. 
Mrs. Niederlander, what Get you... in here before you let all the heat out. <sighs> she looks fine to me. Hmm. No cats and trees either. Let's try to listen in. I am rather conflicted about eavesdropping. Think of it as covert surveillance. That works. Now, if you could tell us what the emergency is, Mrs. I need someone to deliver my midwinter morning packages. I... we all just... you... Mm. You brought us all the way up here during the worst nor'easter in 300 years? So we can run your errands? It's the least you can do after your robots wreck my car. <gasps> Okay, let me tell you something. <clears throat> Mrs. Niederlander, what makes the delivery of these packages an emergency? They're important to the whole community. I hardly think... Dad, she's right. They are important. Mrs. Niederlander is the rider of midwinter. <gasps> How old are you? I'm not the original, you knucklehead. Before me, it was old man Delgado. Before him, Mrs. Crabtree. But why do you do it? This holiday began because of one selfless act of kindness. Every year it gets a little harder for people to remember that. I do it so they won't forget. That's a very good reason. And for the last 49 years, I've never missed a midwinter morning. And you're not gonna miss this one either. Not if we can help it. But we'll have to move fast. It'll be morning in a few hours. We need some big bags. Have any sheets we can use? Plenty. Now enough chit chat. Let's move it, people. Wow. Who knew cranky Mrs. Niederlander had a heart of gold? Not me. <clears throat> I, I must be coming down with something. Me too. <sighs> Even though we don't get sick. Okay, robots. Looks like we have deliveries to make. Riders of Midwinter, roll to the rescue! Aha! If you could open your heart and see what's inside. You'd find a magical place with all kinds of treasure you don't want to hide. It knows what a gesture can bring, like the warmth of a fire. And you'll know what it all means. It just gets brighter and brighter. like we barely made it. It also looks like Mrs. Niederlander miscounted. There's one left. She counted right. That one's ours. Wow. I guess I wasn't expecting anything. That makes it kind of nice. I imagine that's just how everyone felt on the first midwinter morning. Oh. 
Oh, nice. That belongs to all of Didn't us, I you know. Did I teach you any manners? You slobbered on it. What? I'm hungry. Not able to consume bread, I feel as if we're missing something. Maybe if we sniff it? It's not about the bread. No, it's about the internal combustion. Right, Cody? Bringing us closer and closer to what we're here for. Light the fire, you know the reason is not just the season. There's something much more like the fire. Chocolate? Made it myself. Happy midwinter morning, Mr. Prescott. Oh, same to you, Danny. That's the thought that counts. Mm. Despite expectations, the bonfire has gathered a surprisingly large number of citizens. And everyone looks pretty happy. Especially for people whose presents are on the bottom of the ocean. Boy, that must be some bread. Yeah, it is. Okay, I know this'll come as a shock, but I never liked this holiday. Oh, really? Shocking. And you've hidden it so Thank well. Thank you for cluing us in. No, 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 it's true. I have to admit, though, it was kind of fun saving it. Kids, Mrs. Niederlander has asked to speak with us. Thank you, Charlie. Because of you and your trusty robots, we have the holiday I've been longing for. People woke up this morning and held that bread in their hands and remembered why we celebrate. But now I've come to realize my days as the writer are behind me. Don't say that. Nope. It's time to pass the bread. Therefore, I would like to ask, would you all consider being the new writers of Midwinter? Mrs. Niederlander, my family and I would be honored. Hey, I can be in charge of baking the bread. I'll do the rescue! According to local legend, numerous griffins once roamed the islands off the coast of Maine. A male griffin made its home atop the rocky peak of the largest island, where it turned to stone for a long hibernation. This gave the island its name, Griffin Rock. Ah, uh, that's only a rock shaped like a griffin. Earning this lad pioneer folklore patch is lame. Let's see how close we can get. Oh. I think he spotted us. We need to protect ourselves. Oh. Now you're talking. Just a little trick shot I've been working on. The ricochet. You woke him up! <gasps> Sir, either I am in need of a wheel alignment, or... We just had an earthquake. Graham? Way ahead of you, Dad. Checking the sensors now. Chief, may I remind you that Cody is hiking on Mount Griffin? Cody, get off the mountain and watch out for rock slides. I don't see any rock sliding. But I do see a car flying. A flying car? I don't believe any airborne automobiles are currently registered on the island. Oh, no.
Anybody hurt? We're okay, but there isn't any driver. Danny, see if you can locate the Rubios. Their car just tumbled down Mount Griffin without them. On it, Dad. Hop in, boys. I'll take you home. Getting this folklore patch is awesome. <laughs> Dad, we've had a string of burglaries in the last 30 minutes. Couple bicycles, four satellite dishes, and a toy rocket? That's an odd assortment. Simultaneous thefts. I'll open a case file immediately. Danny, did you find the Rubios? Up at Griffin Point Park. They were having a picnic when their car just took off into the air. Like something had snatched it, they said. Something invisible and terrifying. I added that last part. It did look like that car was being carried and then just dropped. I'll add attempted car theft by an invisible something to the case file as well. And all this happened right after the earthquake. More specifically, it was a volcanic disturbance. Our seismic sensors put the origin on Wayward Island. But don't worry, there's no threat of an eruption. I would like to get to Wayward and replace this sensor, though. For some reason, it's offline. Good idea. Take the Darby Ava. Hey, can we all go? Uh, why? Yeah, that island's nothing but an easy place to get lost. It'll be exciting. I was just reading that female griffins used one of the nearby islands as a nesting ground. Maybe it's Wayward. Old Timer's Guide to Main Island Folklore. Yeah, I'm out. Any day I'm not trudging across Wayward Island is a good day. Sorry, Cody. Aww. You do know those are only stories, right, son? Yeah, I know, but... Then why waste time looking for griffins if they're not real? Because it would be an adventure. We get enough adventure, thank you. It'll also help me write a report for my Lad Pioneer folklore patch. <sighs> it's a reason. Count us in. By us, do you mean... You too. Chase and I have work to do here, investigating the stolen objects. Good luck solving the mystery. And good luck to you in locating the nest of an imaginary eagle-lion hybrid. What are we looking for? Female griffins. Seriously, should have known. Don't worry, Blades, you won't see any. Says here, many believe female griffins turn invisible while away from their nests. That way, nothing can follow them back. Invisible? As in something invisible snatched up my car? Hello? You're right. Do you think there's a connection? No. no. The sensor is near the island center. We head north. Keep an eye out for anything that could be a griffin nest. What's it supposed to look like? The book says griffins only gather the strongest materials to build it. Rocks, branches, or maybe cars or other metal objects taken from the island. Just saying. An invisible griffin is stealing metal for her nest. Of course. Told you this would be exciting. Metal. Just like us. <laughs> Keep watching the skies, Blades. <sighs> I better get a lad pioneer patch for this. <gasps> All metal. Any other connection among the stolen items? Each was taken from the island's higher elevations as if something invisible did indeed snatch them from the air. Hmm. I don't remember coming this way when we installed the sensors. Are we lost? Maybe. Something's really interfering with the compass. I think it's that rock. Oh. 
Hmm, has a high level of iron. Could be a lodestone. What's a lodestone? A naturally occurring magnet. And magnets interfere with compasses. There's something carved on here. Are those griffins? <gasps> but griffins aren't real. Or so I've been told. Looks like someone thought they were. Those are probably Viking runes. Norse explorers left carvings on a bunch of islands. Some Vikings did believe in mythical creatures like griffins. What? It was in that History of War anthology. What if this marker was put here because Wayward Island is the nesting ground for griffins? Those stories in your book had to come from somewhere. Uh, did you feel that? You mean the urge to go home? More like... <laughs> an urge to fly! Hey! <laughs> What's going on? from the Darby Ava. Dad, do you read me? Something's jamming the signal. Come on, let's go find the bots. You guys okay? Oh, felt like something grabbed me. And then just let go. I know what you're thinking, and it was not a griffin. No one's thinking that. Except maybe Blades. A griffin? It almost got me! You really saw one? Yes! Through there! Let's get back to the boat! Slow down, Blades. We're gonna have to check it out. Besides, can't drive a boat without a motor. And ours is sitting back there in the forest. Oh, we're so doomed. <laughs> It was very kind of Doc Green to lend us his floating lab. Certainly was, but I forgot how slow it moved. This is pointless anyway. There's no sign of the Rubio's car or the tow truck. But they were flying in this direction, straight for Wayward Island. Uh, has anyone heard from our Griffin searchers? Graham, Cody, are you? We better get over there. It was through there, but I'm pretty sure it wants privacy. Hang back. Wait, it's just a statue. <sighs> yeah, <clears throat> of course. What else? I'll tell you what else, an entrance. It's an ancient temple. I wonder if this place is in the book. I bet it was built by the same Viking explorers that carved the pillar we found earlier. Does it not bother anyone that this is a temple for griffins? Just because Vikings believed in them doesn't make them real. Does it mean that they're not? Here, it says, through the centuries, the nesting grounds have been considered a sacred place and are well protected. Protected by what, I wonder? 
I've got a bad feeling about this. was an unexpected journey, and most unpleasant. Chase, where did you come from? One moment, I was on the floating lab with the Chief, Cade, and Danny, and the next... An invisible griffin snatched you up, right? Curse our metal hides! Hello? <sighs> Boulder, where are you? Over here! What in the world? This whole courtyard is booby-trapped. Stepping on random tiles triggers some sort of rudimentary air cannons. That is diabolical. Yet kind of genius. This is why I don't like griffins. Or Vikings, and I'm not crazy about the lad pioneers at the moment either. Now what? How are we getting Boulder out of there? Chase! Grab! Cody! I... I think I see the Darby Ava. I thought Graham could drive a boat better than that. I don't think this one was his fault. I see sunlight coming through on the far end. It might be a way out. Blades, can you fly through here? No, too many low dangly things. If we drive, perhaps we can outpace the cannons and reach that exit along with Boulder. <sighs> You two ride with Chase, in case the rest of us are too slow. Cool. Can I drive? No. Blades, think you can sprint it? You will be amazed by how fast I can run with giant rocks flying at me. Rescue bots, roll to the rescue! Question, if that's a real nest, and those are real griffin eggs, where's Mama? Mama doesn't exist. 
That nest is carved out of stone, and so are the eggs. Uh, he's right. It's just another Viking sculpture. Then how did all that metal stuff get up there? I, for one, am not giving up on the mama theory. Guys, real or not, we found a griffin's nest. That's why we came, for the adventure. I was unaware there were electronics in the Viking Age. Boulder, lift me up. Me too. It's the damaged quake sensor we've been looking for. And that's the cliff where we installed it, way up on top. The trimmers must have sent the sensor tumbling all the way down to land here. Uh, so what's it doing now? Looks like a power surge. Uh-oh. The nest is a giant magnet. And when the sensor discharges energy into the lodestone, it creates a super magnet. Strong enough to pull metal all the way from Griffin Rock? Okay, so there's no invisible Griffin. We're still stuck! I'll try shutting it down. <laughs> no go. Once the sensor's power surges over, the magnetic pull should cease as well. So we just have to wait for it to shut off again. if we don't shut off that sensor. We need to throw something up there to break it. There's not a clean shot. Don't need one. Come on, Cody. Keep her steady. Excellent aim, Cody. I want a slingshot. Like that are impressive. A ricochet code? Sweet. Yeah, well, this isn't my first Griffin search. Lucky for us. Um, Cody, earlier, you know that brief moment when we thought this might be an actual Griffin's nest? Yeah? That was kind of exciting. Thanks. Although the griffin's nest wasn't real, it was fun thinking it might be, even for a while. That's why old stories get passed from one generation to the next. People enjoy wondering, what if? I'm Cody Burns, and this concludes my Lod Pioneer report on Main Island folklore. What about my patch? I'll do the rescue!